Oh! That hurt. When all else fails, get a bigger hammer. going on here today a lot of the repair that we're going to make has already been done but I'm going to walk you through some of the steps that uh, it takes to do it because some of the video quality was not that great we had a fan running and the audio sounded crappy and uh, we had the back shop doors open and it was bringing in sunlight and we had a light shining this way and a light shining that way and the video quality just really sucked and i don't want to put out a video that is not of good quality uh, we're working on our john deere 9400 combine today and what we're doing there is a separate grader gear case behind this shield and we are replacing the seal in it the best thing you do to do before you start is uh you open your shield here those struts there the best thing to do is uh undo them there's two of them one on that end and get you a long two by four that's the one we use and raise this up to where Yes, to where it is sticking straight out this way that's your best option that allows you to get in there and to do other things now let me reposition my light yeah, that's better all right the separator gear case is behind your unloading auger pulleys here now what we were originally going to plan on doing was just taking this shield off right there and that would expose the end of the pulleys but that did not work because you got to take two of these pulleys off to take this shield off you can see the boat the head of the boat is behind this pulley and the way it is designed is you got to pull the hub off of this shaft to get this pulley off it's a pretty sucky design in my opinion but you work with what you got so to get to those pulleys the best thing we found to do was you undo these four bolts there's one two three and four and that lets this horseshoe come down that's what i call it it's a belt guide you take it down then you can uh actually there's five there's one right there in that slide and don't lose your bushing when you take it out when you do that that takes this loose in which case you will unpin your uh, cylinder here that activates your unloading auger and you'll undo that spring and when you do that that'll allow this whole apparatus to just lay down here on the tailings elevator and get it plumb out the way after you do that um you see the six bolts up there in the rail that hold your outer shield on your body panel on you'll pull those six bolts out and that little short piece of channel will come out and then that will allow you to be able to take the nut off the end of the pulleys and pull your pulleys off and that's where our video will pick up today well let's get this party started we are hoping 
then we don't have to take this big side shield off here. Uh, I got a little piece right here with six bolts holding it in. We're hoping that that is designed. We're hoping that's designed to pull out so that we can get a puller in here and pull this pulley off. That's the hopes, whether or not it works or not. We'll soon find out. So we need a 15 to start with. I really didn't want to have to undo his arm and all this crap. I just really wanted to just pull his shield off and let that hang right there where it is. Let me study on it and I'll bring y'all back and let you know what I decide to do. I got this tag manual. It's a pain in the butt to find anything in it because it's so darn big. It's got so much crap in it. And a lot of times it don't even tell how to take stuff apart. It's just all testing and theories of operation. Hider stat. Intake, engine, engine, engine. Well, it's not a terrible design, but it's not the way I would have done it. Uh, what we did, there's a spring here. We undone the spring and undone the cylinder. And that, when you take the chain off, it lets this arm just flop down here. Now, if it would have been Dylan, this was a simple fix. These bolts that hold this one shield on that we needed out of the way to get to those pulleys, they could have done two things. They could have put an offset in them pulleys where you could bolt them both up from this side and took them both, they both would have come off and then you could got to them bolts or all they would have had to done they wouldn't even had to drill three holes in the pulley. But if they had put three holes in the pulley, you could have backed them bolts out and got that shield on off instead of having to pull this hole, instead of having to pull this whole hub off just to get the three bolts to take one shield off. Now that's pretty, pretty daggum stupid. We done, uh, we done been down this road with this arm before. We had uh, one fall, we had quite a bit of trouble with that. We ended up going to Sykeston, buying, uh, buying a new arm for this, putting all new bushings in there that holds it on, and then it's got some adjustments bolts. It got to where it was, the bushings was wore out and it was turning and it was eating up bales. So now I got to take that little piece out of there. Got to take this piece out and then we got to find a, a nut for that and get a puller and see how big a pain in the butt that's going to be. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's not going to give up easily. They thought I had on one account. So I will give them. I will give them points for that. Okay, air in the tank. A 
guys, you missed it. I forgot to turn the camera on. Surprisingly, it was not dramatic at all. I figured that thing, which has a lock in there, it may have a specific torque. But that was actually very surprising. I think we're going to need that crossbar puller. Your daddy borrowed it last. Uh, <coughs> on that lawnmower. Uh, I got to have a screwdriver to dig these threads out. It might not be too hard to get off. It's got a little wiggle in that shaft. Probably needs a new key in there. Down there got quite a bit of wiggle. This is the part I've been dreading the most. The thing may be finding some metric bolts to put in there to pull that thing out with. Cause I'm sure they're metric. Let me put on my protective eyewear. I just seem to have brake cleaner in my eye today. the burn you got pimples that'll eat them right off let's see if any of these will work see what size we're dealing with here nope bring me a half inch bolt and let's see if just by circumstance it be nice if you could just dang it with a hammer. That big old sheet metal door is heavier than it looks like. We had to undo our struts. Got a two by four holding it up. We had to do that. We had to do that last year when we changed out our vertical auger. Well, we got her figured out now. We went up there to the. We got a trailer store up in town. Well, actually, we went to Crappy Lumber first. We thought they used to carry some uh, metric bolts. They didn't have any. But, uh, went up there, got us some metric bolts. These are 12 millimeters in case you're doing this project. These are 12 millimeters by three and a half. So we got our crossbar puller hooked up here. Let's see if it'll come off. We shall let Robert. He got that done. Now let's see what we got. There's our key. Key weighs tight. At least it acts tight. Now. I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we'll see what we got next. Maybe that pulley just bolts on. I'll pull that roll of bolts and see what we got. First thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna slip this belt here off out the way. This roll of bolts is an 18 millimeter. That pulley uses the bolts instead of a keyway. First thing we need to do, I think, is I think we need to drain a little oil at the bottom of our gear case. plug has ever been out of there. 
little bit like a five gallon of old what it holds looks like. Y'all want to look at some gears? There's the inside of that little piece of the gear case. I just got the seal and stuff, but we may, there's a bearing race right there. We may replace the burn. Well, it looks like it's time to go see our buddy Cody at Tennessee Tractor. We got uh, this seal right here, it goes there. And then we've got our old ring, which we've done pulled off. This old ring here, it goes right around there but what we did not get was this seal and we may i think we're gonna i think we're gonna change them burns i mean we done dug in we done dug in here this far we just well to change the burns uh, So we're gonna knock them burns off. See if Cody ain't got them burns. Shaft looks good. These are just shims. That's a hub. Probably get. We're gonna check these shafts for wear in the keyway. Yeah, see that. See that wear there. We'll go get us some. Get some new half moon keys. Seal half moon keys and them two burns and races. And we should be ready to start going back together. Well, we're getting new burns, new seals. There it goes. Done this crap. Oh. Got ahead of myself. I got to replace this seat. <laughs> It's a scientific method for moving the seal.
come. When all else fails, get a bigger hammer. good in there guys nothing feels like it's binding up so that's a good sign got a final grease circuit here all right Kurt. Be good. I think we are ready to put some oil in it and crank it. I don't see no reason why we can't. I gotta get this shaft key out of the end of the shaft. But other than that, we should be able to crank it and uh, well we gotta put oil in it first but crank it. Make sure we got any, don't have any leaks. We gonna do that before we we're going to do that before we uh, put all this other mess on it. That way, in case it does leak, we ain't got to take so much apart. Robert is changing out the hydraulic filters. Them dang filters is high. They're about 80 bucks a piece. And this combine runs three of them. So you're looking at about 240 bucks change all them filters. Well, let's see what flies apart. Hopefully nothing. Climb up here and see if we see any oil seeping. Well, I got a little seep right here. That's on the hydrostat. Might have to check them bolts there. Uh, this all looks good. I don't see no leaks. So to recap what we did, we had a seal right in here behind this pulley leak and we replaced that seal. There was another seal uh, inside of this and uh, we replaced an O-ring. And while we was in there and had all this part, there was two big bearings in there inside this that we replaced as well as we replace this outer burn. Now, uh, when you crank this up, this shaft here runs all the time, and that's what runs your grain auger. And it runs all the time independent of this so that uh, you can unload your grain tank at any time. And then this pulley right here, that's what drives your straw chopper down there. Uh, you got a high and a low speed and that's what drives your straw chopper and it only turns when you turn your separator gear case on. And it rests right here is the separator gear case. This right here is your hydrostat and that little pump on the back, that's your hydraulic pump. And then it comes through this uh, 
drive shaft right here, it runs down through the grain tank. It's got a shield around it in the grain tank. And it goes into a 90 degree air, uh, gearbox that goes over to the other side of the combine and drives your separator components. But this is your separator engine gear case. Uh, and uh, that's what drives the majority of your machine.